Look at that. The gelato looks like one big, tough, butt-kicking baboon. Mills going at it. How powerful is he? Female not backing down at all. The politics of sex in the baboon society give us surprising answers about who likes who, who's fighting who, and who is really in control. Be an insider in the creature world. That's the mission. The Krat Brothers. Dropped in remote regions to live with the creatures. Through their eyes. On their turf. By their rules. Be the creature. It's one of the oldest countries in Africa and one of the oldest countries in the world. Ethiopia. And up here on the lush highlands of the Simian Mountains is where the action is. We're here with a huge herd of the threatened gelata baboon, the world's only grazing monkey. The gelata herd, one of the largest groupings in the entire primate world. And there is so much going on in here. Rock is play. Running this way, running that way. <laughs> Sounds and facial expressions. <laughs> Standing up and looking around. <laughs> Squabbles, fights. <laughs> this is complete monkey chaos. Who's in charge here? Who's in charge? The answer could only be found in a remote part of Ethiopia. Oh, oh look out. Whoa. A two-day drive from the capital of Addis Ababa, we entered a high-altitude region, 10,000 feet on a plateau, with cavernous drop-offs all around us. And as the terrain got rougher, we realized the truck probably couldn't make it much farther. And we entered this village of Amaric people to see what the local way of getting around was. All right, so this is where we're gonna trade in this set of wheels for a pair of hooves. That road was way too rough. Aiza, Ala. Do they have any donkeys? Yeah, I think they do. So um... We tried to quickly get a handle on the Amaric language. Salam. Aiza, Ala. Yeah, this, here. Okay, thank you. Salam. And we finally found a donkey that might be for rent. Salam, salam, salam. The Aia, can we uh, take for the bira for donkey? Okay? Okay. All right, we can't put too much on. It's a good thing we've packed light. He can keep our gear while we run off with the baboons. Will he um, stay with us or will he run? Will he stay with us or will he run? Will he run? No. No, he stay. He stay? Okay. I'm not sure if he's saying stay or run, but we'll find out. Oh, they, they're stubborn here in Ethiopia, too. <laughs> so within a few hours, we found our donkey and the gelata baboon. All right, let's start figuring this out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Who's who? who? The male. A big monkey, up to 40 pounds. The fur hits you right away. A great mane on his head, proportionally the same size as a lion's mane. On his back, a luxurious cape that billows as he runs. The face, a big, rounded jaw. When that mouth opens up, huge two-inch canines. Great for fighting and protecting his harem from predators. The females, much smaller than the males, only about three quarters the weight. Shorter coat of fur, no mane, no cape. When they're getting ready to breed, that red triangle becomes bright red. And the most surefire way of telling, if they're nursing a baby, that's the female. In riding jockey style, that's the infant. Small and blacker than all the rest. 
the baboon kid. A juvenile is smaller than a female, but looks a lot like her. The way you know you're looking at a juvenile baboon is these kids love to play. They just can't get enough of it. The male, four wives plus kids. That's the average gelata family, called a harem. This male moving with his harem, that's the unit right there. You can see, clear as day, walking through the herd. So what is the herd? Herds form when individual harems join up with other harems, coalescing to form these huge gatherings made up of one harem and another harem and another harem and another. Herds of gelati baboons can become gigantic. There can be up to six to eight hundred individual baboons in a herd. So exactly how does this mass of monkeys organize itself for survival? And what we got to do is get in there, get to the bottom of how these monkey herds work. Martin, two harems coming together. Ooh, what are these guys doing? Those two big family males, they just had a face off. And there he goes. Oh, body slam. Whoa, what happened? That happened so fast. We gotta see it again. This guy charges in, vaults over the other guy, head over heels, teeth bared. Let's take it from the other angle now. It's almost like a dance. He flips, rotates his legs in the air, comes down facing his opponent on the other side. Back to the other view. The teeth are bared the whole time. Ever since the approach, both monkeys have their teeth bared. The teeth stay bared. There's almost no attempt to bite. Whoa. You see, they're still going at it. They're all trying to tell each other, hey, I'm strong, I'm in control of my harem. If anybody out there is looking for a harem to take over, don't mess with mine. I will mess you up. That's why I'm cautious around these guys. See, if you get too close, if you get in their personal space of these males, they retaliate. They tell you to back off, and that's exactly what that family male did. These guys have canine teeth as long as a lion's. They sunk one of those into me. That is not what I want to have happen. The family male is a monkey in motion, wary, on guard, always pushed to show his stuff. There are a few sights more impressive than a male gelata on the run. It's a swaggering gallop, mane flowing, tail waving. <laughs> Look at that big guy move. The family male, the dad, and we'll call him a bot, which is dad in the local Amharic language. From all appearances, it sure seems like he is the head of the harem, leading them through this world. <laughs> Look at that. Our little burrow scared the family male, a bot. <laughs> Come on, a bot. He's not going to do anything to you. How about that, Chris? What happened with the bot? The donkey snorted and scared him. <laughs> Made a bot jump. <laughs> you know, we got to name this guy, and I think uh, he's pretty tough. So, what do you want to call him? Should we call him Killer? Killer? Yeah, <laughs> Killer's a good name. <laughs> All right, Killer. All right, hang tight, buddy. We'll be back. So despite his showy toughness, a bot was startled by a donkey. And his true place in the power structure of the harem would shock us. Gelada Baboon Society is a chattering mass of grazing monkeys. They constantly make that sound as they graze. It's a contact call, so they can keep in touch with their harem Keep in touch with the group. <laughs> 
Geladas make over 30 different kinds of sounds to communicate. We don't even know what every sound means. Plus, they have a lot of facial signals. The lip flip, wow, that is a threat. And they pull this amazing face off with a special set of facial muscles. That lip goes whoop, right over the nose. Chris is great at it. The gelato lip flip. Can you imagine the muscle control needed to flip a lip over a nose? And then there's the eyelid flash. White eyelids, when they flash like that, that's another threat. Lip smacking. A reassuring signal, trying to calm everybody down. And the teeth chatter does it too. The tension yawn. Adult males do this when a rival male or predator approaches. It's a threat. Showing off the arsenal. All right, so that is a good primer on the gelato language. And knowing those expressions is key to understand what is going on out here. And it will help us towards our goal of trying to figure out who's in charge here. A bot knows the language and asks to be groomed. And then tells an outsider to beat it. Did, did you know it's on about that? Yeah, he's riding him as, as a bot defends the harem. And he, the killer has something to say. Is that right, killer? This is great. All right. Martin, check out this huge group of males. Whoa! Look at all these males. All together like this, a whole group of them. At first glance, these guys look big, almost like they could be family males. But they're not quite there yet. They're still bachelors. One of the ways you can tell is by looking at that red spot on their chest. For these guys, it's not that bright red color. It's still kind of pink and dull. As these bachelor males mature, they become bigger and stronger. But that chest patch only becomes more and more red when they become a family male. So a bot, the family male, has a brighter, redder chest patch than a bachelor to go along with the thickest, most luxurious coat. But the sure way to tell is if you see a male surrounded by the females and infants of this harem, that's a family male. If you see a male surrounded by males, that's a bachelor, not yet family male material. For the most part, they live on the periphery of the herd, right on the outer edges. Where are we going, guys? Heading this way. But the bachelors will venture into the herd to make relationships with females and try to get their own harem. That's something a bot doesn't want to see. Bachelor's down below. He's heading down. And a bot chases them right out of there. These conflicts are a lot of show, just like in wild horses. When male wild horses, stallions, compete for females, they put on an elaborate show. Parallel prance, almost like a dance, which can escalate to a real fight if neither back down. They kick and bite, and it can become quite violent, but the winner stallion takes over the harem. But gelada baboon fights are different. Gelada fights are even more show and less physical contact. In fact, for all their fight and fury, these geladas are the most gentle of all baboons. So how does a male gelada get out of bachelorhood and take over a harem? A bot is well aware of their tactics and is heading out on patrol. Hey, what's a bot doing way out there? Straight towards the bachelors. Oh, he's going right in the center of them. Oh, oh they're going for him. They're going for a bot. They're chasing him! They're chasing him out of here! A bot wants to lead the bachelors on a chase to show that he is a strong family male. The young bachelors are kind of circling him, making kind of a crescent around him. Now he's off. He's 
heading right back to the herd. He's reconnecting with his hair. Abad is the family male now, but that usually lasts for only three to four years. So he has to keep other males away. He has to stay on top as long as he can and have as many kids as he can so he can pass on his genes to future generations of giraffes. He was as startled as I was. Everything's cool. Where'd they go, Chris? They're heading down, straight down. It's that time of day, about 4 o'clock, heading for the sleeping cliffs. Harem after harem, they're leaving the gelato fields and heading down. Hey, wait up. Whoa, right down the cliff. There is no way I can follow him here. But there must be a way. I've got to go around. And I'll try to catch up with them. Whoa! It's steep everywhere. They're going really fast. If I don't find a way down, I'll lose them. Whoa! How can these baboons scramble down sheer cliffs without falling? It's looking better this way. Whoa. Wow. Oh, great. Here they are, moving steadily down this grassy section. Even just before bed, those juveniles like to tumble right down to the sleep spot. is as far as we can go. This chasm is where they're gonna sleep for the night. They'll mill around for a little while longer until it gets dark. Then they'll find little crevices and they'll huddle together to keep warm and sleep the night away from any kind of danger whatsoever. We think falling out of bed is a big deal. But imagine if you were a gelada and you fell out of bed. It would be a few hundred feet straight down. I had to get back up the cliff before dark. Not as graceful as a gelada, but I made it up. And the last ones to go down on the cliffs to the sleep spots are the bachelor males. A whole group of them right here, sitting around, waiting for last call. <laughs> Two new males joining the bachelors. Ooh. Everybody's lip flipping. <laughs> that bachelor's up in the tree. These bachelor males are testing out their vocal cords, lip flips, and displays. But it ends without conflict. Back down and off. A lot of noise and posturing, trademark gelata style. Uh, Kill him, where are you going? Come on, stick around camp. Attaboy. The sun's going down, and so are the bachelors, the last ones to the sleep spots. Wow. Oh, here comes the moon. Wait a second, Chris, it's killer all the way up on that hill already. How do you get up there so fast? Oh, man. <laughs> you know where he's going to be by morning? <laughs> The next morning, a bob was the first of his harem to rise. I love it. Ah, that's the family male in the morning. Feeling good, feeling strong, feeling tough. And there we have some confrontation right over there. Bachelors. He doesn't like it. He is the first one up the cliff with one wife right there with him. 
It seems like he's leading his harem up, but is he just an early riser? How does this harem work? Is a bot like a stallion who's in charge of the harem, controlling his mares, rounding them up, and punishing them when they get out of line? Or is he more like a gluttonous male lion who often wanders with the females, but always tries to claim the food for himself and will kill all the cubs when he takes over a pride? Or is it something entirely different? Oh, here come the wives. We'll soon find out. A bot is waiting on top. The female's climbing, but hold on. They're surfacing 10 yards away, and a bot is moving to them. He's following the wives. OK, so the rest of the harem decided to come up on the tip there, and he joined them. Maybe he's not leading after all. The wives are leading the way, and the family male follows. The females decided which way they wanted to start off in the morning. This is fascinating. These baboon females defy the harem stereotype. There's a lot more to find out to really figure out who's in charge here. Today, let's focus on the females, their relationships, and how they contribute to and mold the group. How much power do they wield in baboon society? So the harem is together on the edge there. And here's a bot. He's waiting for this wife, but now looking a little worried. Oh, he bumps her. This wife gets mad. He doesn't want to start a fight. There's a tension yawn. But he doesn't want to be pushed around either. Oh, she slaps him. This female is really standing her ground to the much bigger male. This is fascinating. The females are very assertive. They are not taking anything from a bot. And he backed off. A lion wouldn't take this. Looks like you better not mess with a female gelata. Hey, let's name this wife and not. It means mom in the local language. And let's name her baby Lichi. And not in Lichi. And Inat has requested a grooming from Abad, and he's getting right to work. Each female has to be taken care of. Abad has to groom them. It's like the females demand their massages every day, and he'd better do a good job. Abad has to do everything he can to please the females to remain family male. He has five wives to please right there. Five females to please. It's a lot of work, and it can be very stressful for a family male. Partly why they only last three to four years as the one male in a harem of baboons. And Nod expects a lot from the family male, and when she's happy, she'll return the groom. The chest patch is one of the way females talk to a bot. When that patch becomes a deep pink, that means that the female's ready to mate. And also, the blisters on the chest patch begin to swell. And then, of course, when the female decides she wants to mate now, she goes up to a bot, and he'd better have sex with her right then and there, or she's going to find another family male. A little mating action. So the females solicit mating. They get things started. And then after mating, immediately into grooming. They mated for less than 10 seconds. It's pretty quick. Later, up on the hilltop, a bot kept his eye on Inat and the rest of the wives waiting for their next move. Oh, and there she goes. Inat's heading down, followed by Lychee. Ebba, you better catch up with the girls. <laughs> what did a bot do? Oh, the females are mad. Oh, they are going after him, ganging up on him, sinking their teeth into his rope there. Why did the females turn on a bot? Fight going on back there. Something made the females angry with a bot. And they punished him.
For the females to get this angry, he must have done something to one of the infants. Either by accident or on purpose, no male can mess with an infant. It doesn't matter how much bigger or stronger a male baboon is. It's Enot and the other females who decide if he will join their family and when it's time for him to get kicked out. And with this perspective of the females as leaders, we noticed how they were so involved with defending the harem, confronting other harems, and chasing off uninvited bachelor males, often working side by side in concert with a pot. Females are the core of each harem. Mothers, daughters, sisters, grandmothers. Successive generations of females keep the harem together. Not the males, because the family males, who are unrelated, come and go every three or four years. His time here is dependent on keeping these females happy and keeping other males at bay. Oh, wait a second. He sees something. Bachelor males down the hill. There he goes. On patrol. He is moving fast down to those males. It seems like such a risky move because he's so outnumbered. But that's what these family males must do. Go out to the opposition and show off. It's, it's as if he's strengthened and exhilarated by the whole thing. Bot almost got himself in trouble there. He went up to show stuff to the bachelors, and they got him up in a tree on the end of a limb. Like a true show-off, takes a flying 20-foot leap through the air, boom, lands with his full 40 pounds on the ground, charging back to his harem. It must be very important for uh, the family male to go to the bachelors and challenge them, present himself as the fittest and strongest. He has to show that he can go towards them and not be intimidated. So it's almost like he's always pushing them off a little by going out there, having a little challenge, and then running back to the harem, where he grooms urgently to make sure his wives still like and support him. There's no doubt about it. Each harem is a female-led group. But what about the herd? Who's leading the herd? Is there a dominant harem out here? Is there a queen female who decides what everybody does? All right, on the move. Moving through. Every now and then, they decide to move, and they go in a huge unit. Whoa. All right, where are we headed, guys? You've heard of a cattle stampede. We're right in the middle of a baboon stampede. <laughs> yeah. When they want to go, they go. Moving with a communal purpose and an unseen leader. This is the world of the Jalada, and it is one of the strangest, most bizarre, and wonderful places I've ever been to. The world of the gelada isn't about forests like a lot of other monkeys. The gelada's life is all about grass. And these places are called gelada fields and are maintained by a virtual baboon lawn mowing service for this high plateau. The herd moves through, mows down a field, goes off to another area, and then comes back a few days, weeks later, and mows it down all over again. Incredible grass-eating monkey, the gelada baboon. And they graze with their fingers, picking blades a few at a time until they get a handful and stuff it into their mouths. They do it all with those short, stubby fingers. Relative to body size, the stubbiest fingers of all primates. Imagine having fingers that short. I love the way they go for those roots. They take those short, stubby fingers and those long nails and bam, 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 bam. But my hands just aren't built for it. It really hurts. They must have calluses on their hands. They have those long fingernails. If you look really closely, they're thick, they're strong, and they're sharp. Perfect for digging in. We're moving. Chris, I'll get Killer. Where is he? Oh, no, not again. Oh no, he's gone again. Killer! Gee, we left him right here. All the baboons are gone, so he's killer. Wait a second, there he is. He's hiding there. 
All right, killer, I found you. Come on, the baboons are moving. Oh, oh, hey, killer, killer, come on. <laughs> killer, wait. By the time we caught up with Killer, a storm had rolled in, transforming the landscape into a misty, desolate place. All right, where are we? <laughs> this fog. Heading to the cliffs. The females have decided this is where we'll sleep tonight. It's all this rainfall that makes these highland pastures and the huge gelada herds possible. Gelada baboons need these lush grasslands to survive. And not too many millions of years ago, a lot of Africa was covered in lush grasslands. But as Africa became drier and as the desert spread, grasslands turned to savanna and the geladas died out elsewhere. Now they just survive on mountain pastures here in Ethiopia. What weather. The geladas have the holes in the cliffs to huddle in. They have each other, the social harem, to huddle up together and keep warm. We've got our rain gear. We've got our tent, which I'm getting in right now. <laughs> Killer, don't go too far this time. that wandering donkey. <laughs> killer, wait! Whoa, killer, whoa. Whoa, killer. Whoa, 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 whoa. killer. Whoa, 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 whoa. He's stampeding the baboons. Whoa. He has got a mind of his own. <laughs> you got him. You're right. <laughs> hush, hush. How he just kind of wanders around and then shows up. Check it out. Oh, yeah. Lammergeier. Is that a Lammergeier? Yeah. A young one. He's heading over the ridge. So we took off after the Lammergeier because this was a special kind of vulture with a very unique talent. Lammergeier scan this vast landscape, flying high above with great eyes, they look for carcasses of any of the highland grazers that succumb to the elements. Because they have this unique ability, this talent of being able to pick up these heavy bones, fly high up in the sky, and then drop the bones down, smashing them on the rocks with incredible impact to break them open to expose the delicious marrow inside. But it's not easy. Watch this. Hit, hit the rock, hit the rock, hit the rock, hit the rock. Inches away. See, it's hard to break these. It's hard to aim. Let me try it again. Ah. Yes, hit the rock square on. But check this out. Knocked off that little flake of bone. But that's it. You got to have the Lammergeier technique. All right, Chris, how you looking, buddy? Good. Gonna put a few here. Can you see this okay? Excellent. All right, I'm ready. Let's see what happens. So we'll settle into our little cave here. Eagle came in. Tony Eagle just touched down. He's picking the meat off the bones. The eagle wants the meat. He's not interested in the bones. It's the Lammergeier that's after the bones. And the thick-billed ravens, too, with those hatchet-like beaks. They'll quickly strip those bones clean, preparing them for the Lammergeier. Oh, oh, another eagle coming in. Great, two now. Well, but where is the Lammergeier? Uh, Lapithes vulture here. Ah, uh, Lammergeier, yeah! And off with a bone. Oh, he's got one. The young Lammergeier's picked up a bone. 
another one coming in. Oh, Ooh, he picked his bone quick. There he goes off. Oh, off at the same time. We've got four or five Lamar guys in the air with bones lining up, heading toward the crash zone. Nice height, real nice height. He's coming in, he's coming over. Is he gonna drop? This is cool, this is really cool. Yes. Oh, just this shy, this shy of the rocks. Oh, it's the rock, but it doesn't break. Maybe he didn't have enough height, he's off. Drop, drop, oh yeah, hits the rock. Oh, gets it to crack enough to swallow it. He swallowed it. Wow, forget about cracking. Swallowed it. That, that was a huge bone. That's another way to go. <laughs> Crashing those bones on the rocks takes intelligence. It's basically using a tool. They're using the rocks as tools. Plus, they have a great view of the gelatis. Over the hill, a bot is having a tough standoff with the bachelors. But there are a lot of them, and a bot thinks he's displayed enough courage for now. So he heads back to the harem. The bachelors aren't going anywhere. The strategy that bachelors employ to take over harem can be very political and devious. At two to three years of age, the male juveniles are getting ready to leave the harem and enter bachelorhood. Like this little guy, Hisan. That's kid in the local language. Oh, he is quick. Do you see him catch that fly off the end of his nose? Oh, Hisan has lightning reflexes and you better have these reflexes because the juveniles get into some intense and dangerous play sessions. The juveniles love getting rowdy on these cliffs. They can run around, pull on each other's tails, knock them down the cliff. Oh, he went for the head, tried to pull him down the cliff by the top of the head. It's a no-holds-barred play session. Here comes a whole mob of them coming over the hill. And down. Whoa. Nice move. Whoa. Avalanche. Gelada avalanche. But they're right back up. It's amazing how they can catch themselves when they fall on this steep cliff. Oh, yeah. Caught himself on that ledge. It's the beginning of the transition to bachelorhood. Out. Chris, look out. Whoa! That wasn't me. That was that baboon right there. Threw a boulder down and almost hit you. Watch it, buddy. <laughs> ow, ow, ow. I've been sitting on this rock for 10 minutes. I'm already feeling it in my butt. But the baboons? They have a built-in solution. It's called the ischial callosity. One of my favorite words in the creature world. Ischial callosity is a long word for butt pad. Baboons have four little round pads on their behinds, and they can sit on these rocks for hours. And not only can they sit on these rocks for hours, they can do the butt drag when they're crazy. It's like a built-in pad that you carry around on your butt. I've been sitting here for 10 minutes and I'm already feeling it. <laughs> Somebody's been sitting on a rock for too long. Wait a second, what's going on here? Look at that, everybody's come. The whole, the whole huge herd is all gathering together on these rocks. A butt's not happy. There's another big herd down in the valley. Herds this big get antsy if they run into another big group. It's amazing. They're all flipping their lips, looking down the hill and screaming like crazy. They're so alert. And I can just start to see the herd come up behind me. Look at how the females are so involved. They are aggressive defenders of their harem's interests. 
which is ultimately the safety of their young. They defend the harem, punish the family male. What else do the wives control? These are the harems coming together for the mutual protection of the herd. There's got to be at least 200, maybe three. Look at them all. And Chris and I are so lucky to be right in here with them. This is great. They're just letting us in. That threat from the outside, that got them all around us, huh? This is great. We're part of the herd. They're kind of accepting us more. And the confusion let that bachelor get a hold of Lychee. And this is great for a bachelor male. If Lychee likes him, the females are going to look at this bachelor in a positive light. Working your way into the good graces of the females of a group is an important step in becoming a family male because the females have to accept you. You hiding behind him now. Ooh, I just got a little lip flip. And as long as Leechy doesn't scream, though, this is a great thing for The Bachelor. He knows the females are watching. OK. There goes Leechy. Oh, yeah, there's Leechy, back with Mom. Very, very cool. All right, we're on the move again. Look at Leechy, riding on Mom's back, jockey style, resting on his mom's base of her tail. Using the face of the tail like a back of a horse sack. They are on the graves, the entire herd sweeping this valley. The movement seems so relaxed and casual. No one harem seems to take the lead. I don't see any sign here of a dominant harem. No, I don't either. Or a queen female. Whatever keeps these harems forming in huge herds of over 600 is still a mystery. Well, the sun's up. Ah, Jalatas are late risers. Hey, our burrow really stuck close last night. <laughs> yeah, after a whole week of chasing him, he finally decides not to run off. Hey, morning. Ooh, where are you guys running to? Ah, off to join up with the herd. So what have we been able to see with our own eyes and confirm about the way a gelada herd works? Well, they're made up independent herons, each led by a female. The big, impressive gelada male baboon was essentially a manservant there to serve his wives. But then something happened which crystallized in our minds where the ultimate power lay. Two bachelors were approaching the group. It made it not a little nervous. Ooh. Of course, a bot didn't like it at all. But somehow, one of these bachelors ended up with Lychee on his back. Confusing Inat, who was unwilling to put her infant in the middle of a confrontation, so she backed off. So with the baby on the bachelor's back, the females were not nearly as aggressive as they had sometimes been. The bachelor, by making a relationship with Lichi, was trying to work himself into the good graces of the females. This was worrisome to a bot, and as soon as Lichi went off the back of the bachelor, see right there, he dropped Lichi. A bot moved in and chased him off. And then a bot seemed so relieved when Lichi, the young infant, ran to him and jumped onto his back and rode him, the family male, with all the wives accepting him. But that may not last long, because one of these days, the females are going to decide there is a better male out there and they're going to run him off. <laughs> And 
then it occurred to us, the real power. What all this socializing, all these squabbles, all of the elaborate lip flipping, the vocalizations and other communication. What it was all about was the infants, creating infants, protecting infants, ensuring the future of the group. And that's what all of these gelata baboons were working towards in their roles. So although Leechy has no real power on a day-to-day -day basis, not making decisions, not putting anybody in their place, but a sort of overall power that binds the herd together, that gives them their purpose. And so this little infant is so well protected and so well looked after, it affects the behavior of all the other members of the group. So the power of the infant, like Litchi, is incalculable. Everybody wants a piece of it, even the older infants. I love those gelato baboons. No other monkey in the world lives in herds and grazes like the gelato. And those facial expressions, I can't get enough of that lip flip. It's so bizarre. It's like it's on a hinge. The females take charge of the society for the benefit of their infant. And I can't get enough of looking at those showy male baboons on the run and in their squabbles. All this action is happening here, high atop the African continent in the world of the gelata baboon. Hey, where's Killer? Killer, where are you? Time to go home. Killer! Where is that donkey? <laughs>